Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2026 mod career mode for part number seven today for the Austrian Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous one at the British GP, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one because that was an absolute banger. A classic fight at Silverstone. Real close stuff. A cracking start for us versus Lando Norris, but an all British front row. You love to see it at our home race and then the fighting starts started immediately squeezing going on down towards the field section as we went side by side with a very aggressive Lando Norris I must say and all the AI actually were very very aggressive through that entire British Grand Prix we had a, a through goes moment as Liam Lawson sliced his way through myself and Norris later in the race and eventually we were able to get the job done overtake Liam Lawson and spoiler alert take on our second win of the season back-to-back -back victories from Monaco to the British Grand Prix. First time uh, we've actually done back-to-back -back wins ever on this game as well. So a pretty big moment for us. And in this moment in time, we've got that momentum. So we need to make the most of it. Two wins back-to-back -back still only puts us in fourth place in the championship, surprisingly. You know, we're the only repeat winner this season. But due to the two DNFs we had in the first race and then the Spanish Grand Prix, it's put us on the back foot. But, you know, th this was always going to be the case. Building our own engine with Lamborghini, we knew there'd be some issues to solve. But once they were solved, that's where it was worthwhile. Spending all those R&D points, all that money in the previous season, you know, where we were limping around and, you know, we could only fight for the Constructors' Championship in the end. And, and the uh, kind of engine hurdles we had to try and overcome at the start of the season, it's all worth it now because clearly, as you can tell by the last two episodes, the car is now in a great spot where we finally have a car that can really fight. We have a power unit that can really take it to the top teams or top team, I should say, as McLaren really looks uh, looks to be the team to beat with Piastri and Lawson still scoring very consistently um, and they're still ahead in the Constructors' Championship. But we now bring our final fuel upgrade uh, in game, that is, to the engine side of things. You can see we're as close as we ever have been to Red Bull McLaren in the R&D chart. And that technically now means we have actually got a maxed out car. Apart from the in game upgrades that we can't control uh, from the PU side, we have actually got a maxed out car now. And all that's left to do in terms of engine development is the last two hurdles of the engine, which aren't even hurdles. Their unlocked potential perks, I guess you could say, from building our own engine that come with this mod that we've made for this season. And that involves fuel efficiency and then also our overall MGUK deployment. But those will come later in the season. But right now, the car should be in a very good spot. And like I just mentioned, the momentum we've got as a driver, we just need to be taking solace in it, reveling in it, and trying to do the best job we can as we roll on to the next race. And we've got double the action with this sprint race this episode at the Austrian Grand Prix, of course. But before we start to think about this sprint race, we've got qualifying to take care of here on the Friday. Different, very different circuit to Silverstone. Bit more of a power circuit. So really, well and truly, we actually still should be looking very good. We know this Lamborghini engine that we've built is very decent in a straight line. It's just going to be about that acceleration where I feel like McLaren and Red Bull still have a margin over us. And I think I, now that we've got a maxed out car, we know that we can't really do much about that. I think that's just an inherent thing with the My Team car. Um, versus the official F1 teams. I think the My Team car is just a little bit heavier, even with all the upgrades we've made. Clearly, that acceleration just is not going to be the same as those official F1 teams. But hopefully, the actual pure engine power is going to be enough to hopefully have a good result here. And of course, later in the season, when we make that upgrade, that final hurdle, engine hurdle upgrade for the MGUK, that's going to be a massive booster for us and really will solidify ourselves as being a top runner and being able to, to hopefully go for more race wins. But, you know, the hope is that we can do that immediately this episode still, even without those upgrades, uh, those final upgrades to do with this uh, custom build your own engine mod. Is uh, Q1 was all right, obviously just slow getaway. You know, the track's still rubbering up. Q2 is where we're going to really find out what the pecking order is like. Let's see how we do. Second run, only a marginal gain of one tenth of a second, and that will get us through into the top 10 shootout. But P9 only, so we've got a bit of time to find versus Pierre Gasly and others around us. Red 
Red Bull Ford looking strong here at their home race. They had a bit of a disaster last episode with the, them two coming together and Alonso breaking his front wing on Lando Norris. So they need to, they need to try and solve that because that's been the pattern this entire season. Lando and Fernando, they've been fighting way too much within each other and they've, they've definitely lost countless amount of points that basically see them down in third place in the Constructors' Championship and why it's a kind of two-way fight so far on the Constructors' side between ourselves and McLaren is we have a bit of a wayward oversteering moment in the first uh, flying lap in the top 10 shootout. It's only going to be P9. Yeah, we've got time to find definitely that first sector, but also the second sector. We've made up for that first flying lap by getting about two tenths in the first sector alone, and by the end of the lap, we'll be nearing about six tenths of a second gained. Sounds pretty big, a bit of a dramatic ending as I lock the tyres and spin the car half-wise, but to my surprise, oh my god, some of these guys are so rapid around Austria. And we're down in P10. It's a very stark difference to we were going and battling Lando Norris for pole position last episode to scratching my head over one lap. We're back to having a bad qualifying down in P10. Uh, you know, what's that? Four tenths nearly off Pierre Gasly in P4. Our teammate, the two McLarens, locking out the front row here around the red ball ring. So we have some making up to do in the race. Although, you know, typically on, on this game, Austria's actually been a very difficult circuit for me over one lap. The AI are so rapid over one lap. In the race, though, we can definitely do something. The tire wear is going to be a factor, especially in this upcoming sprint race, that difference of people choosing mediums or soft tires. And because it is a sprint round, I'm not too bothered about being P10. I know we can make some positions up and then have a better grid slot for the full Grand Prix on Sunday. So let's get straight into it here. It's the sprint race on Saturday as we go to five red lights. An ominous front row McLaren lockout. Lights out and away we go. It's a horrendous start for the Ferrari there. We jump two people. Russell as well a bit slow. We're moving about trying to find some space into turn one. Ultimately get a third move made on Esteban Ocon as our rear end gets away from us a little bit. Piastri leads the way. Lawson though all the way down in fifth place. He's had a horrendous getaway from the front row down to P5 and our teammate Gasly's had a storming star as I think he's just got off into P2 as we make the move on Alexander Albon on the outside for P6 and yeah Gasly is second place but he's having to fight really quite hard versus the two Red Bulls. Once again looks like it's going to be locked in the two different Bull teams Lamborghini and Red Bull. Gasly ahead of Norris and Alonso Piastri 2.8 ahead so uh, unfortunately at this point in time it looks like he might be streaking away with this in this uh, sprint race is behind there's plenty of moves going on between all sorts of teams you've got the Audi there overtaking a Ferrari you've got Schumacher oh Schumacher Schumacher retires I thought he was going for a move on the Mercedes but Schumacher has pulled out and retired from this sprint early doors as we make an overtake on Lawson on the outside and he continues to be a bit slow. He's also chosen the mediums like I have. Uh, that's uh, something I haven't noted here. A lot of people around us on softs, I've gone mediums because I just reckon from previous seasons, I think those softs are going to be a little bit secondhand by the end of this race and that may just pay us dividends. You know, we're already behind the two Red Bulls. You know, we can clear them already as a virtual safety car comes out, unfortunately, just before we made that move on Lando. Um, if we can clear them in the next two, three laps, We'll be, we'll be living because then we'll have free air just to, you know, do our, just get our head down on the mediums and those softs will just wear out and wear out. But on the restart on the virtual safety car, Lawson catches me lapping a little bit through the final corner. He re-overtakes this to get it up into fifth place. Can we try and repass him as he's going to be busy watching the Red Bulls and I think might just leave the door open as we go for the early break zone, cut in tight and it's a little switch back from left to right to get us back ahead of of the Kiwi driver as a, a head once again for the five billionth time we see Lando Norris and Fernando Alonso fighting each other far too hard as teammates and they're losing time to Gasly who is now two seconds ahead and they continue to fight into the next sector. Uh, Gasly three seconds back though from Piastri so Piastri is really in the groove of things in that clean air but can we now try and get in the middle of the two Red Bull forwards and actually do more than that clear them to as Lando once again 
then goes for the move on the outside. Lonzo defends. They're going to have to give each other some room and lift off in doing so. It's going to invite us in, but we just can't get that acceleration. What did I say? Red Bull and McLaren, their cars are just too good off the corners. We're going to have to be a little bit brave on the brakes, I think, to make an overtake on these two today as Lando just uh, slows us up a little bit as he gets caught on the curb. And it's a bit of a slower exit than he maybe wanted. So both of us with DRS, he's got it off Alonso. I've got it off him. He cuts across us. We're still on the inside and we are going to be a bit brave on the brakes. A bit too brave, really, because the rear end locks. But ironically, that drifts the car in a way where I, I can actually get the elbow out and I actually pushed uh, Orlando wide onto the curb to make that pass. So the rear locking actually helped me out there a little bit. Strange enough is <laughs> Fernando Alonso giving us no room to work with. Almost puts us in the wall there as we get the pass done, though. Nice and aggressive to the inside of turn one. And that's what we needed. We needed to be aggressive in a break zone and the run into a break zone to actually get that pass done on the Red Bull. Because in acceleration, I'm never going to outdo them. But it's Piastri then leading the way on lap eight from Gasly. It's overcast now. There is some forecast, maybe for some rain coming on later on. As Lando Norris has go, uh, gone down a few positions, sorry. And there's a full core safety car. It, was that for Lando going wide, potentially, or something else? I'm not too sure. I never actually figured that out when recording the replay cameras. I think it may have been for Lando going wide because he lost five positions. And under the safety car, I ask about the weather because this is now very tricky. We've got a safety car that will take us to the uh, last two laps of the Grand Prix. And the rain on the very next lap under the safety car has started to fall and it's falling rapidly. Look at the spots of rain already collecting on the camera and you can see the spray just, you know, look at the halo on the top of the chassis. It's coming down pretty quickly and even on the track surface, that track surface is looking very damp. So the question is... Is anyone going to come in for Inters? Uh, oh my god, that is an absolutely code brown moment there for us across the grass. I lose the rear end and you know what? That, that was my indicator. I don't know, I don't care what everyone else is doing, I'm coming in. I, it's a late decision, I was still debating it right till that very moment. But we cut across the grass, a little bit cheekily, but we're coming in. I'm coming in for intermediates, I think it's too wet. And no one, oh no one else is coming in. Okay, no one else is coming in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely no one. I am the only car in this pit lane coming in. But I just think logically, look at the track. It looks absolutely soaked. It's intermediate. It has to be intermediate. There's no way the dry tyre is going to perform well. And, you know, my little mishap across the grass under the safety car just then on the previous lap, I think it's the big, biggest indicator of the lack of grip out there. But I'm astonished that no AI has come in. I'm the only man that's come in on intermediate tyres. So this is about to either be the worst idea and decision I've ever made, or this is actually going to be 5,000 IQ. Because on lap 10, we're going to resume racing for two racing laps. And at this point, I'm the only car on Inters. We've forfeited P3. We're down to P19. How far can we go? Because I'm sensing already Albon struggling here. I'm waiting to overtake him at the start finish line now into turn one and into the break zone. Drogovic is so slow I can just send it down the inside. And then look at this. They're all bunching up. They're all, they just can't get the power down. And we've just met. <laughs> We've just made nine overtakes in the span of one acceleration zone. That was ridiculous. And it's because it's too wet. It's too wet. Look at the chaos going on here. No one can get the power down apart from me. And we're slicing through these guys like a hot knife through butter. And we're already going to be back up to P3. And we've only done one and a half sectors pretty much. We're now going to overtake Liam Lawson, who's in uh, second place. Gasly was leading the way on that safety car restart, but he's lost the back end. We're going to go round the outside of him, and all of a sudden, we're up into first. We're up into first. This is ridiculous. We went from P19 to P1 in less than a lap because everyone has had a howler, and we are the only smart driver on this grid uh, in this on this day in time, at least, because... 
Oh my word, what, what a blinder that has been to pit for intermediates. Everyone was too stubborn. They were too stubborn with each other thinking, okay, he's not going to pit, I won't pit, and we'll all just stay on, on, on the dry tyres. It's so wet. Look at that track. It's just not time for dries. And yet everyone is having to commit to their dry tyres. Apart from one or two people uh, have come in now for Inters, I think I saw in the pit lane. I think uh, one of them being Max Verstappen in the Ferrari, but We've got a three-way fight going on here between Piastri, Ocon, and uh, Sonoda. So the man who is dominating this sprint, Piastri, he's having a mare. He's down to P5 now. He's been done by Esteban Ocon. Uh, his teammate's the one up in third place doing better in these tricky conditions. And here comes uh, Max Verstappen. He's also slicing through because he has pit. He's pit on that previous lap on Tinters. And look at the rear end stepping up for everyone as they try and slow down the car. Then they've got no traction. And watching Verstappen's on board is exactly like watching my on board from that previous lap. He's just cutting through them. I mean, that, that Aston Martin Honda is just drifting through the next corner, and Verstappen will surely overtake a couple of more cars, but look at this. I, I'm just gloating. I'm weaving around slowly to gloat, because we have pulled off one of the greatest victories I think I've ever had. Um, not just on this game, on, on many F1 games. That was ridiculous. With two laps to go, we made the pit stop, we made the right call, and we went from P19 to P1 in less than a lap to take the win of the sprint. And look at Verstappen! Verstappen pit on the previous lap and has climbed from P13 to P4. He overtakes Ocon to the line and gets P4. What a drive there from the Dutchman. That's definitely going to be his best race so far for this Scuderia Ferrari team. But um, what a mad one. I think Theo Porcher also, yeah, Porcher and Hulkenberg were also two other drivers that followed Verstappen into the pits. And Theo Porcher has been rewarded with one point in the sprint for Audi Sports. What a blinder. Meanwhile, the two Red Bulls, they also pit, but they left it way too late. And Alonso and Norris for the Red Bulls' home Grand Prix, they're down in the bottom half. They, they've had a shocker and we've had an absolute blinder. What? What a sprint. What a sprint that was. I mean, we don't, do we even need to watch the full Grand Prix? I think this alone makes the entire episode. That was unreal stuff. But no, we have a full Grand Prix to go on this race weekend in this episode. And we've just gone and bagged pole position for that said Grand Prix. Let's go to the grid for Sunday. No matter what happens in this Grand Prix, I really probably won't care because that sprint race alone we just had was insane. Insane. But we do have a job to do. And we actually, in all that chaos, we've got a front row lockout for AAR Lamborghini. Gasly managed to hobble that car on slick tyres to second place still, whilst I dominated on Inters for P1, for the pole position. Um, so we need to try and convert this. We have to be trying to convert this because, you know, all last season we're struggling, dreaming for a moment like this, and now we're here. We've got to be taking this and just trying to smash our competitors as much as we can because we're finally here. We've got a front row lockout. It's the Austrian Grand Prix as we go to five red lights and we're underway. It's a good start for us. It's a decent one for Gasly, I think, as well. Looking in the mirrors, yet yeah, not too bad for him either. As we go into turn one, aggressively getting to the apex. Gasly locks up though. He's locked up. He's down to P4. Liam Lawson up to second and Max Verstappen in the Ferrari up into third place and it may even be second. The Dutchman did so well. Even though it was a later pit stop than myself in the sprint, he did well to bite the bullet, pit onto intermediates, got the P4, and now he's rewarded with P2 early on in this race. Amazing stuff. Is this maybe the beginning of the Max Verstappen revival in this series? We spoke about this last episode, you know, him and Russell and Mercedes, and there's no reason why they're, they're, you know, doing so poorly versus their teammates. You know, they're still very highly rated, just a very, very odd thing, but Verstappen up to second place. It's been a long while since we've seen him, his name at the forefront 
uh, this season. You know, you got to go all the way back to last season when he was fighting Piastri for the championship when he was driving for Red Bull. Speaking of Red Bull, Alonso making a move for P14. Him and Lando Norris, his teammate, were down in P18 and 17 starting this race. And, uh, well, Norris is still down there in P21 with uh, the likes of Leclerc, Carlos Sainz and Ricardo is on lap three. We did have the fast half of the Grand Prix. Lawson is now set at purple as DRS is enabled and Verstappen and Lawson are creeping into that one second DRS window. We may be leading, but those two drivers are looking quicker at this moment in time. They've dropped Pierre Gasly in P4 and all of a sudden, Max Verstappen flies past us. The Dutchman leads a Formula 1 race for the first time for Ferrari. Can we come back at him though? But this is, this is a surprise to say the least for the Ferrari. Not so much Lawson, but can we now go toe to toe with Verstappen in his new Ferrari? This is really what you wanted to see, I think. I think a lot of you guys were frustrated not to see Verstappen up here with the Ferrari. You know, this is what, you know, this is one of the battles you want to see. A big name, a big team versus us, and we don't go defensive as we re overtake him, but we did have to go and jockey for position and get pretty damn close to the Ferrari side pod, and it's always very close with Max Verstappen as he dives down the inside. He catches us a little bit unawares and he's all of a sudden back through into p1 this is this is great stuff this is more like it this is more like it this is the kind of Verstappen we want to be seeing in the f1 game series and so many times on these f1 games after season one his ai just drops off a cliff but he's back and we're back fighting him once again for the second time and we are i'm relishing this i'm enjoying this a lot as we switch back him to get into p1 but it's just, it's just nice to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with what is technically the best rated driver on this grid. Uh, you know, minus maybe our teammate with the uh, personnel HQ facility upgrades as Gasly. Speaking of, he's overtaken Lawson, by the way, quietly, as me and Verstappen have been battling each other for P1. We've actually both pulled away from Gasly, from Lawson. Quite impressive, actually, because me and Verstappen have been swapping left and right. And even whilst we've been doing that, we've actually gained time and dropped everyone else on this grid. So this is just an out and out battle with the Dutchman for P1. Gasly also on the softs along with myself and Verstappen in P3 now. That's also one thing to note that I didn't mention yet. I chose the softs because I had a free set to use. I'm planning to go on to hard ties. I don't know about everyone else, but Verstappen does so well to defend that right-hander. Just about moved across enough to block that move on the outside and we're getting a real good sense of what Max can actually do when he's driving at max potential maybe in this race as we go to the inside Verstappen gives us a bit of a squeeze we're going to squeeze him back on the outside go a bit deep to try and uh, get the elbow out a little bit of an iffy uh, rear end on the curb but ultimately back into P1 once again but that's about four or five times we've swapped around and it's still Gasly in third Lawson fourth Alonso up to P5 Norris to P7. What a recovery for the Red Bull drivers already. 12 laps into this race, they've recovered back into the points, just showing the pace difference between the top cars and maybe the middle ones as we drift through that right-hander at the end of Sector 1 as the rear starts locking up for us if you try and break out break Verstappen, which is a very tall order. And we're now on a drag race down to the next right-hander with DRS aided, but the Ferrari's looking mighty quick in a straight line and those soft tyres working well for Verstappen because he's consistent out traction us through these corners. I think this is really just a, ge a general my team car versus the official cars. They just seem to have that better acceleration. You know, it's, it's kind of giving me F122 vibes, I'm not going to lie, when the AI were just coded very overpowered out of corners and in a straight line. I feel like maybe a little bit of that coding has creeped into F123 when you get to maxed out cars. But it may well just be the dirty air and the tyre wear because on the curb, our rear end spins up and we make a mistake and out of nowhere seemingly Gasly has come into second place and Lawson all of a sudden is right behind us again we have a, a moment where our rear end steps out and I'm calling it I want to pit this lap I think these tyres are done I think in that instant that what well, that was nothing to do with the acceleration versus the AI that
that was just really the tyre wear now kicking in as we go for the repass on Gasly to get into second place. But you can see every time I'm putting the power down, my rear end is spinning up those tyres. It's it's stepping out as uh, Gasly now has to defend against Liam Lawson. But yeah, I think it's time to call it on these soft compound tyres and go on to that uh, coveted hard tyre that we love so much as we have battling going all the way down the field. We've got Fernando Alonso looking to pass Piastri. That is unbelievable. Piastri was in the top 10. Alonso was all the way down in like P17. And now 13 laps later, Alonso's passed him for P5. So Piastri looks like he really took a big hit to his confidence maybe in that sprint race because he's performing very, very poorly. It must be said compared to that first bit of domination in the sprint and versus his teammate as uh, Norris is up into P8 having just overtaken Teo Pocher in the Audi Sport car as we are now in, like I said, we'd be called in to box in this lap onto the hard compound attire. I think we may be one of the few people pitting this early onto hards because the actual um, usual strategy that you're given is soft onto medium. But I just know that, that the medium tyre, if we can avoid it, I will always try and avoid it uh, from now on in this series. So onto the hards, which we know are going to work well for us. We just have to hopefully, well, we're not in clean air, but we need to try and pass Schumacher and Albon and get into some clean air to make sure that we can actually undercut Verstappen because, you know, at that pit stop, he was ahead. Verstappen leads the race legitimately at the moment, doing amazingly. It's a much bigger performance from Verstappen than we've seen all season long. And uh, his teammate here has now got us for company. Schumacher having made that pass on Albon, now defending us. And obviously this is uh, Schumacher being a very good teammate to Verstappen, trying to hold me up. But ultimately we have the pace and he's on the soft. So I, I, I know, I, I know how, how horrendous those tyres are feeling just then because uh, we've come off them onto hard tyres as we now switch back the goal Williams car, Hulkenberg, another driver doing very well in this race and uh a lot higher in the race because of the sprint round as we go now through into lap 16, 20 laps to go and Verstappen and Gasly have made their pit stop and we come out w over one second ahead of Verstappen so the undercar has worked absolutely for us and so effectively once the cars ahead of us, the two McLarens and two Red Bulls, once they make their first pit stop and one and only pit stop of the race, we will be leading the way from Verstappen, from Gasly because Hulkenberg's got a pit, Leclerc signs all those guys they've got a pit and all of these guys they're on mediums that's why they're going a lot longer Lawson Piastri Alonso Norris and uh, the hope is well oh, I know the medium tyres will be feeling a bit second hand already and I think even before the pit stop we can probably try and catch Lando Norris three seconds I reckon because of how quick we are on hards and how poor those mediums are going to be yeah well here we go only what like a lap later lap 17 and we are now going to be closing up to our fellow compatriot and looking to make a move on one of these top four drivers on on the medium still yet to pit red flag oh my god no way no way red flag this session has been stopped we're all gonna line up on the grid ah. they're gonna get a free pit stop they're gonna get a free oh my god oh my god piastri lawson alonso norris all of them free pit stop un Unbelievable. What the hell is that luck? What's happened? Russell spun it uh, just after the end of sector one. He's now uh, trying to get round the right way. He's going to reverse and he's going to reverse right into Mick Schumacher. Oh, God. Oh, this is embarrassing. This is just, uh, it's just also a bit comical to watch. The Mercedes and Ferrari, they're stuck on each other. Russell's trying to go one way and Schumacher the other. And yeah, they're interlocked with the tyres. And that is why the red flag is out because Russell's going to beach the car on the grass and Schumacher. Schumacher will actually get disqualified for parking the car there, unfortunately for him. So um, it's it's not a great day in the office for the other Ferrari either, because myself, Verstappen and Gasly and all of us who had just pit, um, you know, only two, three laps ago, we've all been screwed by this red flag because... The four cars ahead of us, who are yet to pit, now get a free pit stop. So it's going to be 1-2 uh, for McLaren now. Lawson leading the way. Piastri second, Alonso third. And Lando fourth place as we go to five red lights for the second time on Sunday. Alonso, a bit slow off the line. All of us have chosen the hard compound of tyre. So it's all an equal playing field. Lawson is going to get squeezed into turn one by Alonso. We had to take avoiding action because if I carried on my racing line there, that would have been a bit of contact. Uh, with Lawson so we've uh, taken a little bit of a, a cautious approach in turn one as much as at this point I've got to say I was so pissed off 
at that red flag. Usually, I, 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 I like a good red flag, you know, a bit of drama, you know, it's quite exciting for the episode, but I was going to be leading the race, and now we're not leading the race, and now we're down in P4, and these lot have all got a free pit stop and a free ride. Well, Piastri, absolutely. He was awful in the first part of this race, and you're telling me now he's got a free shot of winning this race. He's 2.3 seconds ahead of Lando. Yeah, no, I was pissed. I was so pissed off. But, you know, also, reflecting on it, you know, in the comm box, you know, the amount of times we've also got, you know, equally lucky ourselves with the red flag. You know, it comes and goes. Eventually, all balances out, I like to think, in Formula 1. So, you know, we just got to get on with it. We are, we are up to third place, at least. You know, Lawson Alonso kind of took themselves out of the running there into turn one. Lawson, absolutely, you know, he was, again, on the front row. Just like in the sprint race, Lawson went from the front row down to uh, P4-5. So, yeah, he had another shocking start there. So, we are at least back into the top three. And if we can try and clear Norris as soon as we can, then we've just got the rest of the race to try and get our head down and catch Piastri. We've set the purple first sector. We've hold, we, we hold the fast after the Grand Prix. And now we've overtaken the Red Bull. So now we've got 14 laps. We're all on the same tyres. Uh, mine are slightly worn because it's the same set of hard tyres I was on pre the red flag. But same compound attire. 14 laps. 2.6 to 3 second gap. Kind of fluctuating. That's the task at hand. If we want this win, we're going to have to earn it back because we lost it with that red flag and we've got to try and claw it back uh, over the next 14 laps. Eight laps later, though, on lap 30, there's some proper fighting going on between the two Red Bulls and the McLaren of Liam Lawson. Lawson trying to split the two Red Bull Fords. Fernando Alonso, I can tell you, we've been told on the radio, he's got a mechanical issue, so he's going to be a bit slow, and so he's falling away. Lawson is going to get up into P4 and be able to have a go at, uh, at Lando Norris ahead of him and uh, behind. Well, Verstappen down in P6, he may well catch Alonso by the end of this race now that Fernando has an issue but you know for me there's a chance to recover because we're within one second now of Piastri as you can see on the top left Verstappen I feel really bad for he was fighting us for the race win he would have been at least P2 uh, without that red flag and he's now down in P6 so a bit of a shame for him after doing so well in the first part of the race doing well in the sprint to be in that position and now we'll have to maybe just settle for a top five as Gasly as well another one he would have been P3 we, we, we would have been on for a double post Podium. He's going to have to settle now for like a P7 because it seems like he's getting stuck now with other cars in traffic as we as we close in on Oscar Piastri. We were fighting car number 33 for the race win earlier in the race. But now on lap 33, we're fighting Oscar Piastri for the lead and we're going to just about get through. Oscar gives us a little bit of a squeeze, but ultimately doesn't put up too much of a fight. I think he knows we have some great speed around here, but also at the same time, you don't need to put up too much of a fight. You just need to stick within DRS. There will be another opportunity, I think, for Piastri to come back at us unless we can try and drop him and really flex the muscles of this AAR Lamborghini on the hard tyres. But it's still Norris in third, Lawson fourth, Alonso fifth, Verstappen sixth, Gasly's up to seventh place, having overtaken Leclerc. But, uh, you know, Verstappen and Gasly, they're six and seven. It really should be two and three, but it is what it is. We have been the ones that have really just got our head down and been determined to get P1. But now we're having issues. We've deployed all our battery. I just had a massive moment of just oversteer and understeer at the same time through that right hander in the last sector. And that's allowed Piastri to get back through into P1. So I think that was my tyre wear coming into play versus Piastri. You know, we've been on these hard tyres a couple of more laps than him and they're showing a little bit as we now are on the outside trying to make a pass, looking for the switch. No, Piastri blocks us. Did you see that? Did you see the way he slowed up to pinch us and stop any sort of movement to the inside or the outside, in fact? But it doesn't matter. We out-traction him. We get to the inside for the next corner. A little bit of a drift as we lock the rear, the rear axle, but it's going to allow us to stay in P1 this is going to be a scrap and a half all the way down to the last lap of the race, I think, as Piastri, uh, Piastri's hard tyres are a little bit better than mine. But we've just ultimately got that bit better of pace, I think, in terms of the car itself as Verstappen has overtaken Alonso. So Verstappen will be rewarded at least with a top five in this race as we watch Leclerc. He is retired 
from this race. Down in P20, it's a bad day in the office for him. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we cut back to the race lead here. On to the last lap of the Grand Prix. We lead the way from Piastri, just like it was in Monaco. Both of us are in a league of our own because it's, near, you know, just over five seconds to the next car. So it's just me and him once again. But unlike Monaco, he's got room to make a move. We're defensive on the inside. We're going to kind of give him a bit of his own medicine and pinch him to that curb on the left like he did to us previously to maintain first place. We've actually got DRS now because we were behind him at the detection point. So that'll help us out and give us a bit of breathing room to remain in first. Meanwhile, Lawson has actually got ahead of Lando Norris to make it a 2-3 for McLaren and get ahead of the Red Bull Ford in their home Grand Prix. Verstappen P5 from Alonso. Gasly P7. Albon Ocon and poor chair right now is in for another point in this race. But Russell may just ruin that. It's the German German team versus another German outfit and Mercedes are going to ruin Audi's day on Sunday as Porsche is out the points as we cut back to our POV. It's a fantastic day in the office here in Austria. It's the full Grand Prix win. It's the double win around the Red Bull ring and you know what? That makes it three wins in a row. I haven't done that in absolute years on an F1 game. I tell you that from memory, I'm pretty sure we haven't done three wins in a row in a long, long time in a career mode series. This is how good this car is and this is how good we are driving it at the moment. This is our time right now, this time of the season. This is our moment. You know, today everything went, well, apart from the red flag, everything went right for us. And even the red flag, when it was, you know, such a massive advantage for others, we just dug deep, kept going, and we came back through for the win. I'm still reveling in that sprint win that we got, you know, P19 to first place. But this was pretty special as well, you know, having been done by the red flag, having to come back through but uh, and then even more so just the fact of really deeping that three wins in a row three wins in a row that's just mad I genuinely I'm 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 so shocked we've we've literally not done this in absolute years on an F1 game I challenge you the viewers those of you who've been watching me for, for for those years for many multiple F1 games I don't think you'll be able to recall the last time I did three wins in a row in a career mode series. And that's only, ironically, only just got me into lead the championship by seven points. Such is the points we lost in the earlier part of the season. So we actually needed to win these three races to firmly put us into the title fight um, versus the likes of Lawson and Piastri. I go back to, in the Constructors though, it's a different story. McLaren is so damn consistent and Gasly as of late has not been pulling his weight like he was in the last season. It means that even though we've had three wins on the bounce for the team, we're still 20 points behind McLaren. So there's still work to do if we want to try and topple McLaren to try and defend our Constructors Championship this season. So uh, quite amazingly, with three wins in a row, still work to do, still work to do apparently. But guys, if you, if you have enjoyed what has probably been the most successful episode episode of the season so far and on the game period then be sure to hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're new around here then do get subscribed for weekly full on content i'll see you guys next time goodbye